your children. How he pours into each and every one of us the abundance of his love. You are kids. The abundance of, of his love. And I was tasked with this this morning at uh, 6 o'clock. <laughs> So I do as I told the Lord to use me as he saw fit. And so you just have to be in obedience to what God is saying. So it must have been what I'm supposed to be doing today. Well, to my pastor, to the First Lady, thank you once again for the opportunity to stand before your flock. I'm just a servant here on this journey, and I'm honored. Thank you. Well, good morning, House of David. This is the day of nothing but the sentimental stuff, but this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and do what? Be glad in it. Let me tell you something. I'm a little animated when I speak because. I just feel the joy of the Lord moving in me, so I, it's hard for me just to stand here and look somber before you. So if I get a little crazy, just know that I'm just a little out of my mind for God. It's good to see my church family as always. I pray everyone has had a fantastic week. My week has been busy, but it has been a good one. You know, I used to hear my mom sing at night the song, but Lord, it's been, I may not have done all the things that I wanted to do, but Lord, it's been a mighty good day. So already today, it has been a good day. And the rest of the day is going to be a good day for you as well. To my pastor from the Harris household, from the Lex household, and from all of those that are represented here today, we send our prayers and our blessings to you for a speedy, healthy recovery. And not only that, that God will heal you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet and that you will gain restored health in the process. So we need you, get your rest, and we'll be all right here. So I just want to leave it there. How many of you know what love is? Can you define love? According to Webster Dictionary, you all probably didn't heard me preach this message before, so we just gonna do it all over again today, amen? According to Webster Dictionary, love is a strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personality. Affection is based on admiration, benevolence, or common interest. Love is a warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion. Love is object of attachment, devotion, or admiration. Love is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent. It is a concern for the good of another, such as the fatherly concern of God for humankind. Brotherly concern for others, me to you, you to, to others, a person's adoration for God. So as we talk today, we will examine our adoration for God, which is our love for God. The word love has been in my spirit for a few weeks now. I went from scripture to scripture, looking at love. When I thought I had found where God was taking me, I, real, I got a little excited, but I realized that that wasn't it, so it was a little disappointing. I really thought I would be speaking about loving our sisters and brothers in Christ, but God had other plans. So today, his message to the house of David is about our love for him. The message will come from Revelations 2 through 7. The title of the text is, Where Did We Go Wrong With Our Love for God? Maybe we can fix it. So I know that some of y'all have probably heard that those words.
verse before. Rita, can you get prepared to read? We're going to do the New King James Version, so don't be alarmed if I stop you in the midst of your reading. Father God, we just thank you, and we give you glory, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord God, and the opportunity to once again come into your house of worship. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity, Lord God, to stand before your people. And Lord, give them the uncompromising word of God. Lord, melt me, mold me, fill me, spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me, Lord God. For you are the powder and I am the clay. Mold me and shape me into the vessel that you would use, Lord God, to get yourself some glory. Lord, the ears of every believer. Open their hearts, Lord God, that they may receive your love today, Lord God. Lord, overtake them, Lord God, in your compassion and your intimacy, Lord God, for humankind. Lord, teach us, Lord God, how to be the vessels, Lord God, that you would use, Lord God, in such a time as this, Lord God, when there are wars and rumors of wars, Lord God. When people are senselessly being killed and murdered on the streets. When people, Lord God, are running red lights and running from the police, Lord God. Causing harm to others, Lord God, that are innocent bystanders, Lord. We ask now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will show us your love today, Lord God. That you will pour it out, that we will be the remnant that you will use to go into the uttermost parts of the earth and compel them to come in, Lord. Allow our light to shine so brightly, Lord God, that others, Lord God, cannot see their sins for the light that is shining in us. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the gift of repentance, Lord God. Lord, we come already, Lord God. We know that you died on the cross. You gave So, Lord, we thank you and we bless you today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, the ill reader. Y'all have to excuse me. I'm, I'm operating basically with one hand. I have something going on with the nerves in my thumb. Listen to some of the old love songs that were out when we were dating. Uh -huh. We even find ourselves singing to one another. I know some of y'all have done that before, yeah. right? I know even those that ain't been married to you, been with your boo, and y'all have been singing them yeah. songs, right? Uh -huh. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, as we were writing some time ago, a love song came on that later in our relationship became one of significant yeah. meaning to me. Yeah. All week, I had that song stuck in my head. Stuck in my head. And as I pondered the words, I thought about God's love for us. Some of you may be familiar with the 1980s hit by LTD entitled, Where Did We Go Wrong? Yeah. See, what happened later in our relationship, we separated. The separation was difficult for us. One reason for the separation was the distance between, was the distance between us. I was in St. Louis. He was in Texas. What was amazing, our love survived him being in Philadelphia. So what went wrong? The song asked a simple question. Where did we go wrong with love? Maybe we can do what? Fix it. Well, as I kept reading and studying the text, I wanted to know, where is it that the church is going wrong with our love for Christ? How can we fix it? Maybe we can fix it. 
Most of us have been in love sometime in our lives and still are. So what do you do to make that love last? That's what the song says. So what do we do to make this, the love, this love last? Let's examine the text. You may want to take notes from this. Reader, can you please read? We'll come back and break down the scriptures. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things says, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those, those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. Amen. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Amen. In verse 1, it says, and I'm going to go back and repeat what she said, but I'm going to fill in some spaces there. It says, these things says he, and he is who? Jesus who holds the seven stars. The seven stars are the messengers of the church in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. The seven churches, the seven golden lampstands are the seven churches of Asia Minor, which are the churches of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and by Odyssea. Let me tell you, I really like Galatians. Some people try to get away from Galatians because they see it as um, uh, the book of gloom and death. But all Galatians is, is the end of time. It's giving you everything that was spoke going back to the prophets of the Old Testament reminding you of the days that are to come, that of those end days that are before us. So when we look at this, we can also go back to Daniel because Daniel will remind us of some of those prophecies, some of those prophecies we will find coming from uh, Revelation back in the book of Daniel. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? So we, we know that God is our, it's a prophetic word. Revelation is prophetic. It's prophetic to where we are right now. It's prophetic to the fact that we, it said that we will be in a time of wars yeah. and rumors of wars. Yeah. It also tells us that the government, he told us that the government will be upon his what? Shoulders. Yeah. So now we're in that time that we have to count on God to have the government upon his shoulders more than anything. We know that we're dealing with a correct, corrupt government in this day and time, which is spreading all kinds of evil and mistrust among the people. We have become such a country, such a world that we are hating on one another. And it's all by man. So let's move on. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot hear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them, what? Liars. <laughs> you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. So be careful of what you're taking in. 
and we'll understand that a little bit more as I go further down into the message. Nevertheless, in spite of all you have done, verse 4, all your works and deeds, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. I'll explain that more. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstands. And the lampstands were the what? Seven churches. Yeah. From its place, unless you repent. Mm. The churches, the body of Christ. He's going to remove his lampstand. He's going to remove his light from the churches. So we're going to look like the rest of the world. And we have a problem when we begin to look like the rest of the world. So who respects the church? The church begins to lose its flavor, its uh, savor. Verse 6, but this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, who also, who I which I also hate. Jesus wants the church of Ephesus to repent and do the first works. I had to ponder on that for a moment. What are we to repent for? Our repentance is for our spiritual departure from Christ. Y'all got that? Spiritually, we disassociate ourselves from Christ to do the work of the ministry. Y'all got that? We become so involved in the works that we no longer see Christ. The works become the idol. It becomes our God and not Christ. So we always have to make sure that we're keeping God at the forefront. Keeping Christ at the forefront. So when we get too busy doing stuff, we begin to miss Christ. So you have to do an examination along the way and ask yourself, okay, is what what I'm doing, is this unto God? Or is this a self-fulfillment? Amen? Because sometimes we will sing, we will usher, we will minister, we will preach, we will pastor, and we start off with good uh, intentions, and it is unto God, but we become consumed with the works that is no longer God, and it becomes about us, and that becomes idolatry. So what is our first works? Our first works is prioritizing our intimate relationship with God. Our intimate fellowship is just as Pastor requested a while ago. It is our time of meditation. It is our time of thinking on these things. Loving on God, spending time in his presence, and spending time in his presence. What we see here in Galatians, in these seven chapters, is he uh, is we see a jealous God. Yeah. He said, "Wait a minute, you have long left your first love for something that's totally corrupted." Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you why it's corrupted in a minute. He tells us to put no other gods before him. But did you know that ministry can become your God? believe we get so wrapped up in the workings of ministry and doctrine, laboring and toiling in the name of Christ Jesus, he is no longer first in our lives. Next we see Jesus has flipped the script on the church of Ephesus again. After he expresses his displeasure with them leaving their first love, he goes back and commends them for hating the deeds of the Nicolaitans. See, the Nicolaitans were members who did not adhere to biblical doctrine. They left correct doctrine to follow Balaam. The Nicolaitans were idolaters, unclean, self-indulgent, using their influence to lead the people into immorality and sin. This sect were known to rob the believers of their liberty in Christ. 
Let me pause here to tell you a little bit about Balaam so that you will understand. Balaam was a non-Israelite prophet who was first mentioned in the book of Numbers 22 through 24. He was harassed by King Balak, the king of Moab, to put a curse on the people of Israel. Y'all know that there's nothing new under the sun. When we work and walk in the curse of Satan's footsteps, we are walking away from our first love. I just want to give you a little history of what was happening in the church of Ephesus. As you can see, John, better known as Pastor John, lays the story out nicely for us. God knew that the believers of Jesus were people who labored diligently. They were people of great sacrifice and suffering. The scripture tells us that they toiled, which means they worked extremely hard, performing exhausting physical labor. When we look at this church, we would say, you would say, it seems perfect. See, only God can see into the hearts of man. This church sacrificed a lot in the name of Jesus Christ, but yet their hearts were far from him. So remember, we're, we're talking about the church of Ephesus. House of David, where did we go wrong with our love for Christ? And tell me, how can we fix it? Well, let me help you out. God loves us. We are his creation. When we accept him as our Lord and Savior by confession, we made a covenant. Our covenant was to love, honor, cherish, and obey. Yeah. We, some of us yeah. very holy. Yeah. Y'all know that, right? Does that sound familiar? Those are the words we hear during the wedding ceremony. We are furiously, we, we are to furiously pursue, exhort, and admonish him. Think about when you found uh, the love of your life and how you spent time getting to know them. You learned about one another's likes and dislikes. You learned one another's love language. Well, so it is with God. If you never spend time with him, how do you come into an intimate relationship with him? Our love for God is like that honeymoon love between a husband and wife. He grows deeper and deeper through the years. Yeah. At least that is the way it should be. It just gets better with time. We've heard this song. It just gets better with time. I tell my husband how much I love him always. How sexy he is. Y'all may not think he's sexy. I think he's sexy. Past and first lady, that's marriage relationships should mimic those that same love that Christ has for the church. So if 
he's telling us throughout his word how much he loves us, then what makes you think we're not supposed to do that to her? Amen. That's right. That's right. He said that he's the groom, he's the bride, bridegroom, and we are his bride, right? And he treats his bride with love and compassion, am I right? So then when we get our meat, we want to treat our meat with that relationship with God. This is something I wish I knew in my younger years. You know, we just went to church and they had us to read the Sunday school lesson and do all the little plays, but nobody told us about love, the love. They told us that if we didn't do right, we would go, go to hell. Nobody told us that. They gave us very general information. They never showed us how or explained to us how to love God with all of our heart, our mind, and our soul. How to just embrace him with our everything, uh, uh, Deacon Frank. Your dedication to the work of the ministry was exemplary of your love and devotion to Christ. But as we see here in Revelation, that is not the case. It wasn't until maybe 21 years ago while seeking by God that I came into an intimate relationship yeah. with him. Let me tell you, I felt like I was the only person on earth and like I was his favorite. When you come into the full knowledge of Jesus Christ and his love and compassion for you, it's just like when you first had that new baby. Wow. You know, you first have a baby and you bring the baby home, you got that baby everything. They got
and she would not return me, and it was filled with notes where I had just yeah. wrote all in the Bible, yeah. highlighted and wrote parables, and and she and she wouldn't return my Bible. You know, I had notes written on the back of pages, <laughs> and it was mine. You know, and I said, "Well, Lord, evidently it's meant for someone else to get the blessing out of it." So now I'm starting all over again. <clears throat> I, um, the time I spent with him was so refreshing. I began to invite others to my home to partake in the feast that I was receiving. There were days the Holy Spirit would wake me up in the middle of the night and I would rush out of bed to go lay in his presence. You know, it was so good because my house was quiet. My kids were gone. <laughs> and I would go down down in the basement and I would just, it's two, three o'clock in the morning, I'm just laying out before God. Let me tell you, that is the best time to be in his presence and to absorb all of his love. I, I would just lay there. I wouldn't have nothing to say, but I could just feel his presence hovering right there. That well, if I, At that moment, I asked for anything. I believe he just would have brought down the heavens and gave it to me. So that's how in love we ought to be with Christ, that we will give up that sleep time, that eating time, <laughs> that television time to be with him, to spend time in his presence. I soon became so involved in doing ministry that I no longer did those things anymore. I found myself not in fellowship with God, but enjoying the works of my labor because it, I, it was serving God. That's, a mere, that's all I was basically doing was serving him. Just recently, I told God, I don't want to get so caught up in my works and good deeds that I miss him. As I pondered on this mess, on this passage of scripture, it brought me to tears. I had to I had to do a heart check. I had to ask myself, where is my devotion? Where am I going wrong in my relationship with Christ? How can I fix it? We get busy doing so many other things in our lives. It can't, it, I get it. We are doing those things for Jesus' namesake. But have you taken the opportunity to spend time with him meditating, praying, seeking his face, getting and getting to know him? You have known your first love for the works and deeds in his name. What the Father wants from us is our time. He wants you to take time to honeymoon with him. See, saints of God, there are 24 hours in a day. Can you afford to tie two hours and 40 minutes to God daily? I used to. I would give him an hour and 20 minutes in the morning, might be longer, and an hour and 20 minutes in the evening. That was tied to my time. We got two moms and dad. What's in an hour? We're watching television. We didn't turn on a movie. We playing on our phones. <laughs> we scrolling through Facebook. But while we doing that, you look at the clock. Oh man, the hour didn't went by. So why can't we spend that hour in the presence of God, loving on Him the way that He loves on us? I know. I just told on myself. Confession is good for the soul, and I can't tell no one else. Tell them no one else but me. That's right. Now, what you do, you got to answer for. Yeah. What I do, I got to answer for. Right. Everyone's devotion is different, but the outcome should be the same. I share with Pastor that over the years, I have become so consumed with doing the work of the ministry, taking care of home life, children, grandchildren, parents, and working, I no, no longer had time to date God, court him, love on him, and allow him to love me. I was doing ministry but had no real fellowship relationship with God. I remember just telling 
recently telling God how far away he seemed. So have you ever been at that point in your relationship with God where he just seemed like he wasn't close? And you just kind of feel empty. And you need him to show up for you. So I asked him to help me get back to him. House of David, this was a message for me first. So how do we fix what has gone wrong in our relationship with Christ? Point number one, remember to devote time to examining your heart. Do a cardiovascular checkup. Get your heart back in rhythm. Ask, your, ask, your, ask yourself, Lord, have I thought about your love for me? Have I reciprocated that love? Have I told you how, how my heart feels about you today? Lord, I love you, worship you, and adore you. I no longer just want to work and labor without you. I want to know that I am serving with, with the love of my life. That's the love of your life. See, if we have the fervor, admiration, and zeal to chase God, then the pieces of our lives fall into place. Point number two, prioritize your time. First, for the, for the past few weeks, pastor has emphasized meditation. Sitting quietly, spending time with God. We also heard a daily meditation which told us to think on these things. Yeah. Take time to make God first in your life. We squeeze God into our plans. We plan all around him and fit him in where we can. Our relationship with him should be first fruits, just as our tithes are our first fruits. So take time to prioritize time with him. There are 24 hours in a day. Let's give him two hours and 40 minutes. Point number three, repeat the first words. This means go back and, and cultivating, a, in cultivating a relationship with God. Exactly what does that look like, House of David? See, that means meditation time, Bible study, Sunday school, obedience, service, and worship. Yeah. It means commitment, yeah. unwavering sacrifice to God. Yeah. The question is, where did we go wrong with love? We missed our cardiovascular checkup. Our hearts are out of rhythm. We have what you call a fear. See, a few months ago, my husband went in and his heart was off rhythm. They tried to get it back on rhythm with medications and they said, no, we're going to have to put you down, brother. And we'll have to shock that heart back in rhythm. So I don't know if I want that 50-50 chance. Yeah, yeah. Because you can either cold or you can stay alive. So I don't know if I want a border between 50-50. Right. If I have the choice, the chance, the opportunity, and God has given me the, the opportunity to get it right, then why not just go ahead and do and do a healthy diet? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Before you had to go, before you had that heart attack. So we we'll get you a healthy diet, right? You make sure you read your words. You make sure you study. You make sure that you're spending time with God. You make sure you're you're uh, uh, meditating. You're doing all the right things, but not just doing works. So we have to keep the heart in check. So now remember, we're talking about where did we go wrong because the scripture is talking about losing your first love. So if our heart, if we're having A for you, and our heart is out of rhythm. How are we effectively loving God? When a doctor can't get the heart into its proper rhythm, they shock it back into rhythm. The message God gave Pastor John was to shock the church of Ephesus' heart back into rhythm. So, House of David. God is here 
to shock our hearts back into rhythm. We're suffering from a fear. We need to be consistent in Sunday school, Bible study, not just in church on Sunday morning. Participating in men's ministry, women's ministry. It's, there are quite a few of us here, but we all have a part that God wants us to play. And it's not meant for three, four, five people to wear themselves out trying to get everything done. It's not meant for pastor to take on the burden that we should be helping him to carry. He's trying to carry our burdens, his burdens, and the church's burdens. So guess what? We can put him in a position of a fear because we are not carrying out our responsibilities and we say that we love Christ. So if you love him, shock your own heart back in the rhythm. I think I would rather for me to do it than for God to do it because I think the process would be easier. What I think about is when we go back to the Old Testament with the Israelites, the Israelites will go out and do <laughs> all their crazy stuff. They would murmur, complain, complain, follow idols, uh, worship idols, and all of that. And then they'll go back and say, God, we're so sorry. Will you please deliver us? And guess what? Because of his love and affection for them, he delivers them for them to turn around and go back out and do it all over again. What should have been 11 days in the wilderness turned into 40? When the first time he forgave him, 40 years, I'm sorry, it, sh it, it shouldn't have taken that long. So why are we playing with God's affection? We, we, we want him to love us and bless us with things and, and cars and homes and finances and jobs and we cry out to him and stuff and guess what? He bless us, but then we don't do what we're supposed to do. So then when we look at Pastor, I'm sorry, Pastor, I'm on your, I'm, I'm just trying to down your road today. Because he has, remember we're the house of David, we're a church after God's own heart. But we also have a pastor that is a man after God's own heart. So if this man of God has such a love for Christ, that his love overflows into each and every one of us, why aren't we doing our part? Well, he shouldn't have to call you on the phone and say, hey, when you come to Sunday school, hey, when you come to Bible study, hey. The only time he should call you is when there's something critically wrong in your life. You done lost a loved one. You sick, you're in the hospital. You're not doing well. But if you up and you got mobility, He should not to say, when you come to Sunday school, when you come to Bible study, I miss you. It's more than just four of us in this church. Yeah. It's more than just five of us in the church. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm on pastor's side today <laughs> because pastors wore out y'all. Mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, he's drained. And when you become depleted, your body reacts to all of it. Me and Minister and First Lady, 
and Deeks. We can't do it all, y'all. We need everybody. Everybody that say they a member of the house. Everybody that say they love their pastor. Everybody that say they love first lady. Fall in line. I'm just saying. We got to do better. We got to do better. I'm sorry. This is not where my, my, my words come out of my tap, my book. So I'm sorry. Let me. That's pastor's message, not mine. Where did we go wrong? God has no longer been a priority. I pro his, the priority that we give to God is just through our service, but what about our love and affection for him? It all goes hand in hand. It's more than us just coming in and just saying amen and watching pastor preach every Sunday and watching the praise team sing. There's more to that. Please don't get me wrong. God commended the church of Ephesus for their labor, sacrifice, discernment, and their hatred for the Nicolaitans. So House of David, don't stop serving and laboring in the vineyard. Just do a heart check and prioritize. He wants us to work, but in our laboring and keeping a sound doctrine, do not forget your first love. Don't be like the Nicolaitans being driven away from your first love by every wave of doctrine. Where did we go wrong? We have not repented and repeated the first works. Dedicate time to God, seek him first, meditate, study his word, attend Sunday school, be obedient, and worship. Get in fellowship. Establish an intimate relationship with God. It's one thing to talk about God but it's another to have a relationship with God. We can, we can sing about him. We can pray to him. All of that is fine and well, but it means nothing if we don't have a relationship with him. John told the church, listen, if you don't go back to your first love, I will remove its light. He will remove the light from the church unless you repent and turn back to your first love. So our community giving and all of that, he's not saying that it's wrong. He honors that, but he wants more from us, and that is our love towards him. Amen? Where did I 
It's a different walk with Christ. Amen. Praise God. We see there's not any physical need, but you probably went back to Christ in your heart, in your body, in your soul. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for that. Now we have something to look forward to, to, to work on. Get back to the love of God. Get back to the world. Get back to loving on people. Amen. This pandemic has really set us apart. We don't see you. I ain't got to love you. You still got to love on the people. If anybody needs love, we need love more now today than ever. Amen. We always need to show our love. Amen. Because we are today in Sunday school, we are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister. That was a teaching word for us. To help our pastor anyway, too. Amen. Praise God. But now, it's giving time in the house. 